Paul Singer is a Washington correspondent for USA Today. He's with us from Capitol Hill. Uh, let me just start off by asking you, Paul, as Dean Reynolds just mentioned, Mitt Romney suggested that there may be some issues with Donald Trump's tax returns. Let's play that sound for Mitt Romney. Fr frankly, I'd like to see uh, a number of things from the candidates, not just their positions on, uh, on issues in some detail. And some candidates are more thorough in, in uh, laying out what they're going to do than others. But I'd also like to see their, their back taxes. This will give us a real sense of whether these people are, are on the up and up and whether they've been telling us things about themselves that are true or not. So, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, frankly, I think we have good reason to believe that there's a bombshell in Donald Trump's taxes. What do you mean? Well, I think there's something there. Either he's not anywhere near as wealthy as he says he is, or he hasn't been paying the kind of taxes we would expect him to pay, or, or perhaps he hasn't. Uh, uh, been giving money to the to the vets or to the disabled, like he's been telling us he's been doing, and uh, and I think that's uh, the the reason that I think that there's a bombshell in there, is because every time he's asked by about his taxes, he dodges and delays and says, "Well, we're working on it." Frankly, the the voters have a right to see those tax returns before they decide who our nominee ought to be. Paul, explain what Mitt Romney's doing there. Well, that's a real head scratcher uh, coming from Mitt Romney, who was attacked almost the exact same way uh, by Harry Reid uh, in uh, the 2012 presidential campaign. Harry Reid sort of raising this specter that there was something wrong with uh, Romney's taxes, which never turned out to be true. Um, it appears that Romney is part of the sort of uh, uh, increasing movement amongst the sort of establishment Republicans to raise doubts about Donald Trump. There's a great deal of concern that Donald Trump will not only uh, lose the White House for the Republicans if he's the nominee, but also damage up and down the ballot the Republican brand. So it's possible that Mitt Romney is just sort of carrying that kind of establishment message to really raise some doubts about uh, Donald Trump. but. It's really unusual coming from Mitt Romney. It's not where you'd expect it to come from. Yeah, I, I'm told, um, Paul, as we've been talking, Donald Trump has actually um, sent out a response, and there it is. Mitt Romney, who totally blew an election that should have been won and whose tax returns made him look like a fool, is now playing tough guy. Donald Trump not letting any charge there go uh, unnoticed. Uh, let's talk classic Trump. Classic Trump, absolutely. Let me ask you this. Donald Trump has won the past three contests. Marco Rubio was second in Nevada, and Ted Cruz was third. Let's talk first about the scenario here for Marco Rubio. What does he need to do to beat Donald Trump? Well, he better start by winning something. Uh, you know, I heard in your earlier uh, uh, package that, uh, you know, he was saying, well, you know, we feel good about winning in all these states on Super Tuesday. But there, I haven't seen a state where he's leading in the polls. Um, you know, maybe he's got a shot in Virginia. Maybe he's got a shot uh, in Minnesota. Those are sort of places where Rubio is closest to Trump uh, in the polls. He's got to win something. You gotta, he's the only one there left who has not actually won one of these contests. Um, you know, and then going forward, he has to then after Super Tuesday, he certainly has to win in Florida and he has to begin getting he's got a lot of endorsements coming in from sort of establishment figures. He has to start getting their money as well uh, so he can actually have a war chest to fight this out for a while. Yeah. What about Ted Cruz? I mean, when you look at what's happened, particularly with the uh, white evangelical vote, um, most of those votes going not to Ted Cruz, the son of a pastor, someone who That's was right. widely thought to have that really strong connection to that particular community. But instead, a lot of those folks going to Donald Trump instead. What does Ted Cruz need to do uh, when you look at the political landscape ahead? Well, you Cruz's whole sort of uh, uh, campaign strategy was build up that support with the evangelicals and then Super Tuesday was going to be the, as we call it, the SEC primary. It was going to really play to his strengths. These southern states with a lot of evangelicals were all going to break for him. Well, Texas is a home state and it's, he's in the lead, but not by a comfortable margin. Uh, of the other states there, Donald Trump is doing very, very well. Cruz has to crush it on Super Tuesday in some of those southern states, in Alabama, in Arkansas, in Texas. If he can't win those and win those decisively, it really raises a question about whether he can beat Donald Trump anywhere else on the map. Yeah, some really high stakes for him. All right, Paul Singer, thank you so much for your analysis. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Lee.